Hi, this is Sahana. Today I am here with one more important topic that is migrations. Before discussing migration, let's quickly recap the important steps that are involved in Entity Framework Core Setup. The first step is to install necessary NuGet packages. Second step is to create models. We also call them as Entity Classes. Then create a DB Context class, which is another important class and add migration and the last step is to update database once these steps are done we can start working with database i have covered first three steps in separate videos you can visit entity framework core playlist there you will find all the videos as per msdn migration is an entity framework core feature that provides a way to incrementally update the database schema to keep it in sync with the application's data model while preserving existing data in the database Let's understand this in more simpler way. Let's take an example and understand migrations. Let's say we are building employee management system. We know that employee and manager are the important classes that we have to create. Here we have created employee class with necessary properties and we have created manager class with again necessary properties. And after that, inside this data folder, we have created this app db context class which is a db context class it has derived from db context and here with the help of connection string we have provided necessary details about the database and the server then using db set properties we have added two properties employees and managers now entity framework core knows it has to create two tables by name employee and manager as we are following code first approach there is no database available yet in the server we are at a stage where we are ready to create database and tables here comes migration feature while creating database first we create migration using add migration command we are going to use package manager console to execute these commands go to tools go to nuget package manager here you will find package manager console to create migration we use add migration command and we should and we should give some meaningful name hit enter see this command it has built application if built is succeeded then it will create migration if you want to remove migration then you can use this remove migration command if you notice this migration command has created new folder till now we didn't have this folder has this command has created folder by name migrations if you expand this folder you can find it has created a file initial create dot cs here first what before underscore what you can see is a timestamp if i open this file it has a class by name initial create this is the name that we have given same name is considered for class creation then this class is inheriting from this migration then this class has two methods one is up method and another one is down method if you look at this up method this method takes migration builder as parameter then here we have a code to create table if you look at this here it is create table what is the name of the table employees is the name of the table then these are the columns your employee id first name last name salary are the columns properties of employee class are considered as columns and this has all the necessary details to create a table like including its type and whether it is nullable or not and here if you notice employee id is considered as primary key then again next again same create table this time managers is going to be the table along with columns and manager id is considered as primary key this is about up method next we have down method this method has a code to drop table one more important thing to notice here is even if we have executed add migration command tables are not created yet in the database it is always a good practice to inspect this file as this file sometimes may contain some code which is not expected migration file is kind of a record that is maintained by entity framework code to let us know what changes are taken place at that particular stage each time we change something at model level we should create new migration this add migration command has created one more file that is app db context model snapshot.cs file model snapshot is another important file which represents current state of a model 
this file is added to migrations folder when we create first migration then with each subsequent migration this file is updated this is the current state of our model these are the columns and their types unlike migrations file with each subsequent migration new snapshot file will not be created the same file will be updated as i mentioned earlier when we execute add migration command database or tables will not be created let's verify that let's open sql server object explorer we have to expand ms sql local db then expand databases in our case employee management underscore EF core practice is the name of the database. If you look at the databases, we don't have any database by that name. As we discussed earlier, while creating database, first we execute add migration command, then we execute update database command. Let's again open package manager console. This time we are going to execute update database command. Okay, hit enter. See. After executing this update database command, again we have message build started. If build is succeeded, then this command has applied migration with this name. While executing update database command, we can specify the name of a migration. If we don't specify any name here, then latest migration will be considered. Let's again go back to SQL Server Object Explorer and verify our database has been created. Click on refresh here. Again, I'll expand MS SQL local DB. Again, expand databases. See, here we have employee management underscore entity framework core practice. If I expand this database, here we have tables. If I expand tables, then we have employees table and managers table. Let's verify. Let's expand this employees table. Here we have columns employee ID, first name, last name, and salary. Employee ID is the primary key. If we expand managers table, we have we have the columns manager ID, first name and last name. Next time, if you modify any of these models, again, you should execute add migration command with new name. Again, you will have to execute update database command. I'm not doing that in this session because in next sessions, we are going to learn relationships and many more things. That time, again, we are going to execute these commands so we can learn that later. Again, if we come back to database, here we have one more table by name underscore EF migrations history. Let's expand this table and see what is there inside. Let's look at the columns. Here, if we look at the columns, we have migration ID product version. Let's see if this table has got any data. Right click, click on view data. This file has some information. See. This file has stored migration ID and product version. Let's copy this one. I'll open notepad. This is the information that is stored inside migration ID. So as in our project, there is a folder by name migrations there. All the records are maintained at the database side. A new table has been created by name migration history. This table will keep track of all the migrations that we have created. I feel Entity Framework Core is such a nice framework which handles everything so systematically. Let's wind up this session by discussing few of the important advantages of this migrations feature. The first one is migration allows us to version control our database schema changes. This way, this makes it easier to track and manage changes over the time, thus enabling better collaboration among team members. Next thing is it allows us to roll back changes if needed by any chance if something has gone wrong. Again, we can execute update database command with by mentioning name of a migration which was correct. Next, it allows us to apply migration without losing existing data. When you apply migration, Entity Framework Core compares the current state of database with the migration file and executes the necessary SQL commands to bring the database schema in line with migration. As we progress with the course, we use this feature again and again. That's it for today's session. Thanks for your time. See you soon in the next video. Thank you.